Hello and welcome to today's talk, Friday the 24th of uh, February. Now we're going to be looking at the most significant study to come out so far, looking at natural immunity. Now this is starting to filter through into some aspects of the popular press, not a lot, but it's getting through a bit. Uh, you're still not reading about it on government websites very much, but the science is now essentially in place. Natural immunity after COVID infection is effective. After 40 weeks, it affords at least a 90% protection against severe disease, hospitalisation, death, any severe disease, compared to people who have not had natural infection. So if you take people that have had natural infection, people that have not had natural infection, there's a 90% protection in those that have had natural infection, which is equal to or better than the claimed figures for uh, vaccination. Not saying the vaccination doesn't offer a protective effect, we're not allowed to say that, but we can certainly say that the natural immunity effect is quite uh, pretty good, pretty good. As we would expect, as we've been advocating and saying on this channel for uh, some time now. Now here's the paper concerned, it's actually from The Lancet. Full paper is there, this is the PDF version. And <laughs> um, what is interesting is this paper is on natural immunity. It confirms that natural immunity is really effective and it's funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So good for, good for them, eh? So um, let's look at it now. Um, so past infection. So basically they take two groups. Um, group that have had past SARS uh, coronavirus 2 infection. So that's one group. And this is the other group here. No past SARS coronavirus 2 infection. Now you'll see that uh, vaccine is not mentioned there because people uh, studies that looked at hybrid immunity were excluded. Now, they did include studies where um, vaccination was accounted for, was controlled for, but if it wasn't, they didn't. So this is almost, it's almost like this data is coming from a, a non-vaccinated world, which makes it all the more uh, impressive in, in my view. But, but nothing you wouldn't expect because the human immune system can recognise 8 billion types of different foreign antigens. You know, the idea that senior doctors were, um, shall we say, considering the possibility, some might go as far as, say, intimating uh, that we wouldn't have a natural immune response to COVID is just completely ridiculous. And uh, to be fair, we've always uh, believed that there would be a, a good natural immune response. An effectiveness to past infection was rated by how likely were people to get reinfected, how likely were they to have symptomatic disease and how likely were they to have uh, severe disease. Now, as you would expect, uh, the findings, high levels of protection uh, from reinfection caused by alpha, beta and delta variants. Now, during alpha times, beta times and, and delta times, depending on where you lived, there was some reinfection, but of course, nothing like as much reinfection as we've had during Omicron times. More on that in a minute. The figures there are really quite, quite fascinating. Uh, lower levels of uh, protection caused by reinfection from uh, Omicron uh, BA1. And indeed, we know from subsequent o uh, Omicron variants as well. Um, but of course, Omicron is causing way less severe disease. So the reinfection is much less significant uh, than it would have been with these previous variants. So less reinfection in earlier times, uh, more reinfections in later times. And as we'll see, over half of the world's population has had Omicron now. Now, effectiveness against, uh, we'll look at those figures in a minute, effectiveness against reinfection with the Omicron BA1 variant. So if you've had previous infection, it doesn't matter too much what it is, but the protection against reinfection from uh, Omicron BA1 is, is only 45.3%. Uh, protection against symptomatic disease, pretty well the same really, 44%. So what we see is huge immune escape with the Omicron variant, and we've known this for some time. So if you've had any form of uh, SARS coronavirus 2 infection before, there's still a fairly good chance, uh, if you're exposed to it, that you're going to uh, catch uh, Omicron. So that is the level of protection. And remember that this is, um, this is relative to people who have not been infected. So people that have been infected relative to people that have not been infected, 45% protection rate. Not that great, but we know that the subsequent infections tend to be milder. Protection against severe disease if reinfected with BA1 is uh, basically it's 90%, isn't it? 
So it gives a 90% protection. But remember, this is a 90% protection relative to other people who have um, who have an Omicron who have not had previous exposure. And we know that they're much less likely to hosp be hospitalised. So the absolute risk is way, way less. But compared to other people with Omicron, it's a 90% level of protection. So natural immunity working really quite well there stimulating the antibodies stimulating the b and the t cells particularly stimulating the t cells the t cytotoxic cells and uh, the, the t the t helper cells and as well as the b cells which actually produce the the the, um, the antibodies so a wide spectrum of immune response and as well we know that the vaccines are only producing antibodies and stimulating uh, b and t cells against the spine protein whereas natural immunity does it against all the components of the virus all of the components that recognize the immune system recognizes as foreign now um protection from reinfection with ancestral strains now obviously they're not here anymore but looking back at the data uh, looking at the Alpha and Delta, which was a big problems in the UK and the United States. Yes, the immunity declines over time, uh, but protection against reinfection with Alpha or Delta remained at 78.6% after 40 weeks. And people that were reinfected, of course, were much less likely to get severe disease. So pretty good for the older variants. But then the immune escape came along with the, uh, the um, Omicron. So people that have had uh, Omicron before, BA1 in this case, uh, they only have a 36.1% protection at 40 weeks against an infection with a subsequent SARS coronavirus 2. And of course, the only SARS coronavirus 2 that are around now are Omicron and its subvariants. So possibilities for reinfection with Omicron are certainly there, but they tend to be very mild cases on the whole. Now, this is the most encouraging part here. Protection against severe disease at 40 weeks if reinfected. Uh, for the Alpha and the Delta variants, it was 90.2%, so essentially 90%. And for the Omicron, it was 88.9%. Uh, so basically, it's, it's just a percent under 90 Both Both around about 90% within statistical errors. So that's 90% protection from... Uh, Severe, a severe outcome with uh, an Omicron infection. But of course, that's compared to other people with Omicron infection who have not been previously infected. And we know that their risks are way, way less. So it's a 90% relative risk reduction of a, a much smaller overall risk. Now, how long this is going to go on for? The study went up for 40 weeks. You know, I, I can't see this going down dramatically in in. in you know, 10, 20 weeks after this. I think it's going to be remain fairly high. Uh, so good data there, up to 40 weeks. Now, OK, we, we can't speculate beyond that because the data doesn't doesn't tell us. But it, what, what would be surprising is if, like, you've got 90% protection at 40 weeks, and then it go all, all, all of a sudden goes down to 50% protection. That's got, not going to happen. It's going to wane. I think we can say with certainty it's going to wane gradually as people are protected from severe outcomes. Now, this is interesting. And remember, remember, um, I don't mean to be mischievous or cynical, but this is published, this is uh, funded by a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the authors actually say something quite profound here. Let, let's read, let, I, I'll put in the full quote because I don't want to get it wrong. Data suggests that the level of protection afforded by previous infection is at least, is at least, as high, if not higher, if not higher, and that provided by two doses of vaccine using high quality, what they call high quality, we won't comment on that now, mRNA vaccines is what they say. So patent admission there that um, the natural immunity is, is as good, if not better. Imagine that. Right. Human physiology is actually better than artificial pharmacological interventions. Just, just imagine it. You know, the, the idea that a lot of very senior people weren't upfront about this right from the beginning is really quite appalling. There's questions to be answered. Ne questions to be asked. They'll never be answered, of course. They've all swanned off with the knighthoods and the, the big payoffs um, in, into happy retirement hopefully for most of them or 
I'll leave you to decide whether it's deserved or not, but these questions are never going to be answered. But we can ask them. And you and me all know that they should be answered, that there is a, an injustice here, that they should be answered. But they won't be. But there you go. That's what the study is now showing. Now, this is, this is fascinating. As of June the 1st, 2022, a COVID pandemic had caused an estimated 17.2 uh, million total deaths. Now, most of these in people with comorbidities, of course, most of these in the, in the uh, elderly, of course, but still, it has to be said, amounting to, to a very large number of uh, deaths. Estimated 17.2 million total deaths from a pandemic that was completely uh, preventable. Uh, 6.88 million reported deaths, 7.63 billion total uh, infections. Of course, some people are reinfected. Um, now, between the fifth, no, this is interesting, between the 15th of November 2021, which is when Omicron came along, data just going up to the 1st of June 2022, 3.8 billion people have been infected with Omicron, 46% of the world's population, and of course this is what, this is a long time ago now. So basically we know that way over half of the population of the world have now been infected with Omicron. Um, it's probably 60, 70 percent. We, we, we don't know. All, all we can say for sure is that between November the 15th, 2021 and the 1st of June 2022, it was uh, 46 percent of the world's population were infected with Omicron. Therefore, it's generating all this massive amount of protection. As we said, relative to other uh, people who haven't been infected with Omicron, 90 percent protection, 90 percent protection against severe outcomes, severe disease. Uh, 40 weeks after and we expect it to last for longer so this is remarkably encouraging for global natural immunity we're not going to get herd immunity because of the constant reinfections this is still endemic it's going to be there for a long period of time but it's becoming less and less significant which is the good thing about it so there we are most of us have been infected now with omicron uh, understanding the need for uh why do we need to understand this? Predicting future potential disease burden. So I'm expecting that to carry on going down. Designing policies for travel access to venues. Uh, well, this needs to be encouraged now because uh, every time... Um, we, can't, we can't advise people to get infected, but it remains true that every time someone does get reinfected or re-exposed, that's going to build up their immunity. So even if someone just breathes in some Omicron, if they've got good levels of immunity, of immunity already, that's going to boost their mucosal levels of immunity. And this is what we're doing in the UK. Where we are living with it. Um, I mean, I haven't had a vaccine since November 2021. And um, so far, you get colds, obviously, but you know that's part of life, isn't it? Um, informed choices on vaccines, yes. As we've been saying since the very start of Omicron, the risk-benefit analysis has changed. The UK government, of course, has acknowledged this without acknowledging it. Um, now there's no vaccines available for people under 50 unless they have special uh, comorbidities. So it seems to me that the um, governments are trying to sort of, at least in the UK, we're trying to taper down the vaccine programme. And, of course, that will save the politicians and the senior medical officers ever admitting that they were wrong. Um, estimated protection from past infection, how they got this information. So huge amount of studies, um, synthesising studies, 65 studies, 19 countries, looking at the variants, looking at the time. Data goes up to the 31st of September 2022. But as we say, excluding vaccine immunity and excluding hybrid immunity, including people that were vaccinated um, if the vaccination status was uh, controlled for. So um, grounds for optimism, what we've been saying on this channel for, well, what we've always said on this channel really, um, was uh, is, is vindicated. Um, the hybrid immunity idea that was talked about and promoted for such a long time, um, looking increasingly irrelevant, to be quite honest. Um, I don't think I can say too much more than that, so we'll leave it there and thank you for watching.